All right, welcome everybody to Hump Day Hangouts. Today is, as I check the date, the 8th of February, 2023, episode 430. So uh, we're going to say some hellos, uh, do a quick uh, little uh, meet and greet. If you're live, say hello in the chat box. Let us know you're here. If you're not live, well, hopefully uh, you can join us live sometime at semanticmastery.com slash HDHO. That's where you can always go uh, for the latest Hump Day Hangout at 4 p.m. Eastern. We update it as we go live. Uh, if you're before that, then you're going to see the uh, replay of the latest Hump Day Hangout. If you want to ask a question throughout the week, you can always go to semanticmastery.com slash HD questions and pop in your question there, and we will definitely answer that or point you in the right direction. So with that said, before we get into announcements, uh, let's say hi to the guys. Chris, how are you doing today? Doing super good. Um, happy as usual and uh, very excited because... Just a couple hours ago, I checked out the new mastermind membership area. And uh, yeah, like the new SOPs and stuff. So I'm very glad that we made that move and uh, quite happy about it. So everyone who is in the mastermind, they are definitely in for a treat. Yeah, that's true. I, I mean, appreciate you bringing that up because we've been getting some really good feedback, which I mean, kind of patting ourselves on the back, but it's been something we've wanted to do for a while um, and that we heard feedback over the past couple of years. And so we've just been looking and you know, there's tons of options out there. And so we made the switch and we've uh, brought in the members, active members of the mastermind. And so far, feedback has been super positive. People really like it. And uh, I think this is going to be a big win for everybody because it's more focused. You're not going to have Facebook distracting crap all over the place and uh, have much more, um, I guess, quicker action or quicker access to actionable content without the distraction. So anyways, I love it. Um, but Bradley, what do you think and how are you doing today? I'm good, man. And uh I yeah, I like it too. It's it's we're we're trying to get better at organizing the content um to you know where it's just easier to access and find stuff grouped by category. So uh it's still a work in progress, but I think it's already an improvement from what, what it has been for the last couple of years, where it was just kind of like all the content in this one area. So anyway, I think it's gonna be good. Plus, you know, there's discussion groups in there and everything else. And we can get the hell out of Facebook, <laughs> uh, which is good. I mean, Facebook has its, I guess, uses, which uh, to be honest, I really probably wouldn't be in Facebook much at all if it wasn't for our groups. Um, yeah. So this might actually get me the hell out of Facebook altogether. We'll see. So I'm looking forward to um, communicating more in there as I, as I, you know, more people, more of our members get moved into there. I'll start community, you know, being more engaged in that community too. And then we'll phase out Facebook. So. Cool. Um, well, yeah, we'll, we'll definitely be talking about that some more as we go. Um, lots of cool stuff going on with that move, uh, making things easier for people. And uh, something I want to talk about though, speaking of, uh, of good information, uh, you did a webinar on Monday, Bradley, with the Ranking Factory guys. Um, I'm going to grab the link for that, but can you let people know a little bit about that and, and uh, in case they missed it, why they might or might not want to check out the replay? Yeah, we had the the guys on from the Ranking Factory to demo the, uh, and I guess really pitch or promote the Backlink Factory and in this new tool that they came out with called the POI Factory or Point of Interest Factory. And, um, you know, I've known about this tool for for years and I have never really used it. And I've, in the last year and a half, I've had had it and I haven't even really used it. And I've even had a couple of calls with one of our longtime members and uh, a, an agency owner who's also been a speaker at or presenter at several of our live events, Brian Caddo. He, and uh, he, you know, he he's a ninja with that tool. He's even done a couple of private calls with me to show me how to use it. And I've still never used it. <laughs> so, but uh, right now, what I'm going to be teaching about at SEO at the beach, which is in two weeks from tomorrow, or uh, yeah, two weeks from Friday, I guess it is. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to be teaching uh, how to like this local PBN or local blog network kind of process that I've developed over the last couple of months. Um, and I want to integrate the Google Sheets link building in the POI factory. So that generates a whole bunch of points of interest. I mean, it's, it's really cool. And I can see using Google Sheets and the and the backlink factory to build georelevance into local PBN sites. And that's that's how I see myself using it going forward is kind of doing it to, as like a tier two or even tier three or a combination of tier two and tier three linking to kind of power up local PBN sites that I'm building now. Um, and again, that's what I'm going to be teaching about at SEO at the beach and then after the event in the mastermind as well. So uh, that's something that, you know, I, I, I'm going to start learning how to use the backlink factory tool 
over the next couple of weeks. Um, I'll probably reserve time in the mornings when I'm doing my live streaming to go through and learn it. And that might be boring to some, but those might be days you want to skip the live streams. Uh, but that is precisely the reason why I have those that hour, hour and a half scheduled every morning is so that I can do these kinds of things that I wouldn't typically make the time to do. Um, so I, I think I'm going to take some time to uh, learn how to use that tool. And then once I become proficient with it, I'm going to do some more thorough training in our mastermind specifically about how to use it and how I'm using and integrating it with my link building business. So uh, it's one of those things where I see the value in it, which is why we brought it. I already know and trust that it is a good product, solid product. That's why we brought it to you guys, even though I have limited experience with it myself. Uh, I'm going to, and I'm publicly announcing it now, going to learn how to use it. So now I'm accountable uh, to make sure that I actually do start using it. Very nice. Well, so that uh, happened this week. And then uh, I put the link up Monday. Uh, you're going to be talking with Damon Nelson, right? About uh, local pages. Oh, yeah. That's Sweet. insane, too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You want to give people a little preview of what's going on there? Because that's I do. To the link. Um, if people want to sign up to join live, uh, you can go do that. Yeah. And it, that's something else that, again, I've not used, but it's it, it integrates with his RSS master sites. And um Daryl Osborne from Entity Elevation, he's he had a hand in helping kind of like develop or direct some of the development in that. And um, I know it's freaking powerful what they're what they put together. I've not used it myself, but I saw where uh, a video that or I guess a webinar or something that Damon had sent to me privately about a week ago. And it looks really powerful. Um, and I could see using it very strategically The where I could see the power of it is building these local pages is what it's called. Um, and embedding them in an ID page, because the ID page is like a critical component to what what I teach and kind of my methods. And um, I could see putting the local pages, what Damon's tool builds. As, and again, it uses kind of the RSS master technology as the backbone of it or it integrates with it. Um, I'm not really sure exactly how it works because I haven't really used RSS master sites. I have access to it. In fact, at Black Friday last year, I bought 10 master sites <laughs> from Damon and I still haven't even submitted any data for any of them yet. So, uh, but the local pages looks really powerful. And again, something right up our alley at Semantic Mastery and all you guys. So we're going to do a, a promotion on that on Monday. Very nice. All right. Uh, well, we mentioned it a bunch of times. I just want to say if uh, you're hearing this about the mastermind, if you're doing local SEO, your consultant, your agency owner, um, check us out, mastermind.semanticmastery.com. Find out if uh, you think that'd be a good fit. We'd love to have you if you're looking to uh, grow your agency um, and do it with us as well as around other people who are doing the same thing. So um, let's see, guys, anything else before we get into the questions? That's it. Uh, I'm good. All right, let's uh, let's jump in. Okay, let me grab the screen. Let's see. Actually, on. I won't grab the screen until I need to because otherwise it'll just be a mess. Um, let me open up this question. Sorry, guys, I didn't have these ready yet. How dare you, Bradley? Yeah, I was working. <laughs> uh, so today is the eighth. So that means last week would have been the first. Yeah. We don't have a lot of questions. I'll be damned. So we might wrap this up early today, guys. Unless you guys that are attending live have questions, uh, post them. You've got it's going to be an open floor. So I'm looking at the questions. We have about four, and that won't take long to get through. So cool. All right, the first one uh, looks like it's Robert. Um, actually, no. Let me back up one more. Okay, Suleiman. So, uh, Suleiman. Sulaiman, <laughs> whatever it says. Love you guys. Love what you guys are doing. My question is, uh, can I link Weebly sites to each other? I think I, I could have sworn I covered this somewhere. I could have sworn I'd covered that one before. Um, anyway, uh, can I, can I link Weebly sites in a link wheel to power them up? I've never, I've done your keyword poking method. I found several keywords and I built Weebly sites for each of them. Now, can I link all the ones in the same niche in the link wheel to get them to rank number one? Thanks. I don't know if that'll get them to rank number one, but yes, you can link them into, into a, a link wheel. And um, and that can help. It, you know, I, I don't know what your keyword selections are or anything else, but yes, key, uh, you know, link wheels do work. <laughs> That's why Google said they didn't work like ten, eight years ago or something like that, <laughs> because they do work. Um, and they, and so, yeah, that's, that's absolutely something that you can do again. I don't know what your keywords are or whatever. 
Uh, but you can play around with it and test, right? Monitor the existing, like wh where it is currently with them not link wheel together and then test a linking configuration, right? And and monitor, but let it settle. Unfortunately, you have to wait a couple of weeks, uh, two or three weeks sometimes. Uh, I, I generally recommend waiting three weeks to see where whenever you change stuff like that to see where it kind of like fully settles in once the dust settles, right? Or the ripples settle, because it's, it's just like dropping a rock in a pond, right? It creates a ripple in the algorithm. And so you kind of got to let all the data settle. And so generally, if I'm going to do something significant, like a structural change or, uh, you know, some kind of major link um, linking kind of, uh, you know, scheme or whatever, if I'm going to change the link scheme, then something like that, you, you, you kind of got to wait to see where it's going to fully settle. But uh, that's what I would do is plan that out and, and see where it is currently and then do whatever kind of link wheel structure you're going to create. And monitor it but let it sit for a little while to see if it improves the result or if it um you know produces a, a negative effect and it can do that but it, that sometimes is temporary that's why i'm saying it, it's if it can be like a ripple effect so you can see it, a vo some volatility right either positive or negative fluctuations sometimes you're going to see both that's why i say just let it sit for a little bit let it kind of marinate let it settle in and then once then you can determine if it made an improvement or if it, um, you know, was was kind of a slide backwards, and then you can adjust and 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 wait again, and that's kind of the game that we play when testing. But I love that you took action on uh, poking keywords and then building out some Web 2.0 sites. That is a great strategy; it works well. Um, I'm going to be doing some more of the Web 2.0 stuff here shortly. I was getting, I I I. Cut. I recommend with the rank and rent method that you kind of start with the web 2.0 assets because they'll, they'll typically rank fairly quickly. But if you already know for sure that you're going to target a particular area, then it does make sense to build the WordPress site or whatever type of primary self-hosted site that you're going to build first, because then that becomes the base that all of your other kind of um, web 2.0 assets can be modeled after. And so it, it it's a little bit more logical sequence if you know that you're going to build a permanent asset, so a self-hosted site um, for that areas that you're targeting, then it makes sense to kind of do that first before building out the web twos. However, like I said, it's kind of a quick strategy. You can start by just targeting keywords with web twos and get really good results. Um, so anyway, I like that you took action and went out and started building stuff right away. That's that's fantastic. Okay. Uh, what's up, guys? I see Bradley. Just a quick one, uh, just because somebody's asking a follow on question to this while we're on it. Do you okay. power up or continue to add content to the web 2.0 properties? You can, and that will strengthen them. Um, but if I mean, it's entirely up to you. If 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 you can get them to rank fairly quickly with with little work, then I mean, that's that that's good enough. You can always strengthen them. Um, and that helps to keep them hopefully to stick longer, right? So where they won't start to drop in ranking and everything else. So there is something to be said for that. One of the things that we are doing a lot more of now for my own my own agency clients and also for uh, some link building stuff is that we're po populating the web to, branded Web 2.0 assets with long form content. So well-optimized long form content. And, and in fact, we've actually shifted away from publishing supporting content on the main website to publishing supporting content on the branded web 2.0 blogs instead. You understand what I'm saying? Like for, for years, my strategy had always been to build a silo structure on the main website for, and again, I pretty much exclusively do local. So um, I'm talking about local websites, but I would build a silo structure in it. And then we would publish content consistently, regularly, depending on what the client's uh, you know retainer was or the agreement was that they had with me. At the very minimum, it was one blog post per week. Most of my clients were getting like three three posts per week. Um, and we just would publish content for years. No kidding. Like, and, and just in, you know, we'd always place the supporting content in the appropriate category. And we'd use that as an internal linking opportunity, link back up to the top of silo page. And all of that worked for, for many, many years. But um, it's, things have changed. The algorithms changed a bit. And I'm, I've seen that that is, can actually potentially cause some problems because you have too much content on the site that are all kind of targeting the same topic. And so there can be some cannibalization issues and things like that. I've seen that happen with several of my own sites recently, uh, some client sites as well, some of the client sites that we've been publishing on for years. So we've gone in and pruned a lot of that content away. Like we just moved it um, to trash folder in WordPress and started instead now publishing that same content with the same frequency, but we're doing it now on the branded web 2.0 blogs instead. So it doesn't potentially cause any 
cannibalization issues with the main website, if that makes sense. So um, the follow-up question about Weebly if, or or any web twos, would you continue to add content to them? Yeah, that's actually really kind of standard operating procedure for for my own stuff now. Um, so yeah, and and you can make them a lot more valuable and powerful by adding more um, topical authority to them, right? That was a good question. Okay, moving on. Next one was from Robert. What's up, Robert? He says, I'm curious what you're what you think about something for a local carpet cleaning company who has 20 or so city plus service pages. Would you make them, excuse me, the, would would you make the main page in the menu that says carpet cleaning, the primary carpet cleaning plus city page? Um, or would you have a separate carpet cleaning page that's just generally about carpet cleaning as the menu item that says carpet cleaning? Yes, that's what I would do. That's what I'm I'm doing more and more of that now. Um, uh, just to be clear, guys, what I'm doing now is like for multi-location businesses or multi-locate, if you're targeting multiple locations, whether you have several actual Google business locations or not, that's beside the point. But what I'm doing now is uh, the, a product or service page that's optimized for the product or service only, right? No, men, unless the site is entirely optimized for like, okay, so let me back up. Let me clarify something, Robert, because like the the Louisville project that I'm working on, uh, that I'm streaming publicly, right, is part of uh, part of what I'm doing on my Twitch channel. Um, that the the I have a, a few different brands that I built for that, and I'm testing different configurations. Okay, but what I'm leaning more towards now is creating a. So, for example, one of my subdomain sites is a subdomain specific site that is optimized for that particular city, Louisville, Louisville metro area, which is a large area that covers a lot of smaller areas, unincorporated communities and all that kind of stuff. So that subdomain site is entirely optimized for the Louisville metro area, right? So that homepage can be optimized for Louisville metro, which is kind of like the broadest region or even the count the county that kind of encompasses that. It doesn't matter what the geography is, guys. I'm just giving you some examples here, some real world examples, right? But Jefferson County, like, so we could optimize the homepage for the brand Plus like the broadest area, which could be a state, could be a, a region, it could be a metro area or a county or all the way down to a city level, right? Depending on what it is, how um, specifically, how specific you want that whole site about, right? Like how, how geo-specific did you make it? So on a Louisville subdomain, it's obviously that entire site is going to be about Louisville or Louisville metro area or kind of the greater area that is just slightly bigger would be Jefferson County. So that's I have that Louisville subdomain site where the homepage is optimized for Jefferson County. But then I have the Louisville, which is the main city page. That's what people search for the most as a separate inner page. Right. And then I have four service pages on that site that are just optimized for the service. But because the whole site is optimized for Louisville, like there is brand mentions in there. That site is performing incredibly well. However, what I'm saying is, is there uh, some of the other kind of configurations that I'm testing right now are having service pages that aren't optimized for any particular location. Uh, the home page is really just a brand page. Then you have a service page or different services pages that are optimized for the services only with really no optimization for any locations. You might have a section on the page that mentions the different locations that are part of the service area. And they can link out to those, but it's not that the content isn't optimized and the title tag is not optimized for any one particular location. It's just the service plus brand. Does that make sense? And then I'm doing location pages where the location pages is optimized for the top level keyword plus location modifier. Then append to always append the brand to the end of that. And that's the title. And then on, and that particular page has a summary of all of the services and it links to the individual service pages. If that makes sense. And again, guys, I'll just demonstrate this. I'm going to grab the screen just to kind of demonstrate this because we don't have a lot of questions anyways. And I can show this. I'm streaming this publicly anyway. So here's the examples that I'm talking about. So to get to your back to your question, um, Robert, I, I'm preferring kind of the secondary method that I'm going to show you in a minute. Um, anyway, let me pull this up real quick. Grim Reaper Tree Services. Okay, so this is the site that I said is the entire site is specifically optimized for Louisville, Louisville, right, which is the city, the Louisville metro area is really big, but Jefferson County kind of encompasses that. And so you can see that I have 
uh, on the page, I'm really talking about the homepage in this case is about Jefferson County, which people don't typically search for keyword plus county, at least in the tree service industry, they don't. It's usually tree service plus city. So that's why I can optimize the homepage for this in this particular instance, because the entire site is about Louisville, but the home, I don't want multiple pages targeting Louisville, right? So I want the homepage really targeting Jefferson County. So that's why you can see it in my uh, you know, title tag, for example. And then I have four separate service pages. Now, again, because this entire site is optimized for Louisville stuff, there is probably some mentions about that. But these pages here are really kind of just general. If you take a look, just tree removal and then the brand. Does that make sense? So there's no targeting of location modifier in the titles. And then I go to my service area pages, Louisville being the top page, but the other ones are, again, it's not a silo. These are all just top level location pages, if that makes sense. Uh, but you can see now we're talking about, and I transposed what I normally do. In this case, I have the city modifier and then the keyword as my title tag and then appended to the end of that as the brand name. So this is one structure that I like that works well. But if you're talking about multiple locations, this is a the structure that I'm testing with now. And I, I, I like the structure, but I don't know if it's going to perform as well. Um, so we'll find out. But this one here is Premier Pruning. And this is going to be a brand that I expand. Uh, I'm testing this in Louisville to start, but I'm going to expand this one out to a lot of other locations as well, other states and everything else. So there's no mention of any location on this homepage at all. The homepage is only the brand name. There's not even targeting a, a keyword. It's just the brand page, right? Then these are all links to, by the way, I don't have separate service pages on this site. All I have, these are all jump links. I have one service page and it, these are all jump links to different sections on the page, just like these are, right? So you can see that this is all one page. And then on each location page, which I only have one top level location page right now, which is the Louisville page, because I think all the supporting geo pages are going to be on a subdomain. Uh, but this is the Louisville page here. And then you can see now this one is obviously optimized for the keyword plus location modifier. See that? And then again, each one, this is what I was getting back, back to Robert's original question. On the service page, you link out to the locations that are currently available. Let me back up and just show you the, the, the service area pages, the location pages. So on the service page, which isn't optimized for any one location, you can link out to all of the locations that it's, uh, you know, the service area locations. In this case, so far, it's only one, which is why you see down here under service area, I've only got the one link to the Louisville page. Then on the location page, you link to each one of the services or service pages. It's how you create the association between the product or service and the location pages, but you can separate them out so that you don't have to have every single location page with every keyword, right? You pick your top level keyword and you use that as your location page keyword plus the location modifier. And then you have, you link out to all of your other services that is provided by that company within that location page. So therefore you have the likelihood of being able to rank for all of those different keywords, if that makes sense. So if somebody was to search for, and again, I can demonstrate this using the, the Louisville Grim Reaper Tree Services site. Um, let me just go to Google and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So like if I say tree service Newberg uh, KY, Okay, you'll see right there, Louisville Grim Reaper Tree Services page, okay? That is optimized for Newberg Tree Service, tr Newberg Tree Service. You see it right there in the title tag, okay? But if I come back here now, so it makes sense if I search Tree Service Newberg that I would be ranking for that, right? So if I come back though and I now search for tree removal, okay? This is the, I'm getting to a point here. But tree removal, Newberg Tree Service is ranking for that keyword that's not in the title tag, but it's still ranking, number one. Why is that? Well, because I on the Newberg page, I'm associating each of the services, tree removal, tree trimming, tree clearing, which I just changed that from land clearing to tree clearing uh, and stump grinding. So that might not be ranking right now because I, again, I just changed that keyword like in the last two days. But if we try tree trimming, Newberg, Kentucky, once again, the Newberg tree service is it's not in the title tag, yet it's ranking for that query, right? That's why I'm saying I like this kind of a method where the, the product or service pages aren't optimized for any location. They're optimized for the product or service. 
right? And then you have location pages that are optimized for the top level term plus location. And then in the location pages, you link out to all of the products or service pages. It creates an association between the products and service and the location, right? And so that's why I like to do it like this because I'm starting to see this is working really, really well, um, this type of a structure. So again, one, one of the other ones was stump grinding. Once again, Newberg Tree Service. It's not in the title tag, yet it's ranking number one for that term. Do you understand? And I mean, there's other companies there that that's like Bobby Ray Co. or whatever, like they've got dedicated pages on that. You can see there are, are people that have, well, that's another one of my sites that I was testing with. But uh, this is outranking that even though it's not in the title tag. Because again, it's about the associations being made between these pages. Hopefully that makes sense. And last one, I'll look at land clearing. And like I said, I just changed that keyword. So I'm not sure if that one's going to be ranking as well. It's still ranking Newberg Tree Service. That's interesting. And now if I change tree clearing, again, Newberg Tree Service, ranking number one. You guys see that? I, I mean, there's other keywords I could test as well that I hadn't even really, but just because again, they're all kind of associated now, but Tree Care, Newburgh, Kentucky, once again, you see that? So I'm ranking for every one of these kind of keywords associated because I chose my top level term, which is tree service and associated Newburgh with it. Um, and then I, again, I associated all of the different services, which that services page in this case, again, I'm testing now with a uh, site that is going to be a national site. So premierpruning.com will be a national site. That's why on this service page, I have, and, and in this case, I have one service page instead of four service pages. And on the service page, I have all of these jump links that go down to these different sections on the, and same thing with these, if that makes sense. So like, if I click on, that one's not working now, what happened? Interesting. I don't know why that one's not working. I'll have to go back and work, check on that one. Um, so anyway, hopefully that makes sense. That was a good question. I went kind of in depth on that one. Um, so right now the site has carpet cleaning as a menu item with no geo reference. That's what I would do for the service page. I would link to the service page with no geo reference. And then the other 20 service plus city pages, just wondering if we should delete the generic carpet cleaning page in the menu and replace it with carpet cleaning plus city page that the client is link located in. I don't think so. Um, Hopefully that makes sense, Robert. By the way, we do have a Build with Bradley group tomorrow. And since I did not record the last Mastermind webinar, tomorrow is going to be more of an SEO-related Build with Bradley meeting, Robert. And this would be a good question where we can drill into it a little bit deeper uh, because it's a Mastermind webinar or meeting. And tomorrow it'll be a meeting. So that might be one that you want to bring up tomorrow as well. We can dig in that a little bit deeper than I can here. Okay. Next one, I, Bradley, thanks to the Ancatex Ratio comp Competitor Analysis Template. What if the top five competitors have barely any links? How many links would you build and of what type? Or what if the top five competitors have no links at all except one competitor um, and they have many links skewing the data? Well, yeah, you just got to remember that. If you remember, you always got to look for outliers, Robert. Um, and again, this is because you're, you're talking about a link building text text ratio, uh, you know, my link building workbook, which is available only to mastermind members. So this kind of a question should have probably been directed in the mastermind because otherwise, like I'm answering a question about something that hope the hangout members or uh, audience can doesn't have access to unless they're in the mastermind, right? Um, so uh, anyway, you have to pay attention to the data and determine, you have to always keep that in mind. So remember, you're looking at with the way that I analyze backlinks for my competitive link analysis in the link workbook and the way that I teach in the mastermind is we always start at the URL level, right? Google doesn't rank websites, it ranks web pages. So we always start at the, but websites have a significant influence on the, a page's ability to rank. So we always have to start at the URL level and determine what the backlinks are, but you always have to zoom out and look at the entire backlink profile to the root domain in its entirety to determine what, what are you truly competing with? Because again, if you start to analyze backlink profile for local search queries, and you see that a lot of those or several of the top ranked competitors have zero or very few backlinks, I almost guarantee you that every time it's going to be an inner page URL that is ranking, not the homepage. And that's why it has very few if or zero backlinks is because it's ranking on internal links, not external links. 
And so that's why you, you always start at the URL level first to determine what are the most competitive links? What do you have to meet and exceed in order to be competitive at the URL or page level first, right? But once you identify that or in a very, in an, in an, when a search query returns results for pages that are ranking that have very few or no external backlinks, then you can immediately zoom out to analyzing the root domains instead of the top ranked competitors and then kind of determining what are those, uh, you know, what are you competing with at that level, right? Yeah, and you can just go through, just like I teach, and cherry pick out of the their backlinks, apply all the filters that I teach about, right? So apply a maximum of at least what the, the way that we do it is a maximum of three backlinks per referring domain. You can actually even go down to just one backlink per, per referring domain. Um, you want to eliminate no follow links, and you want to only look at live links. Then you classify all each one of the anchor the what what's left. You classify each one of those links, the anchor text, into one of five categories: brand URL, uh, miscellaneous, um, empty slash frame, um, target, and topic. Those are the five different anchor text types, and that gives your anchor text ratios, right? And then we go through and analyze the backlink profile of each one of the top ranked competitors and look apply those same filters, and then you can start to cherry pick. Remember, use the trust flow filter. Um, I can't go through this live, guys, because this is mastermind stuff. But go through the uh, majestic trust flow filter, right? This is the far left filter on the, when you're looking at the backlinks tab um, in majestic. And then apply it. If you click that little drop down, you'll see it'll say trust flow zero. Most of the links from your competitors are going to be in the trust flow zero category. Then it'll say trust flow one to 20, trust flow 21 to 40, 41 to 60, and et cetera. And uh, then you can just go right into like the trust flow one to 20 and start looking at each individual backlink and determine, does it have topical relevance? If it doesn't have any topical relevance, then look and try to determine, does it have geographic relevance, local relevance? And if, if you can't determine that it has topical relevance or local relevance, then just ignore it because Google is ignoring it too. You know what I mean? Like essentially the only way that the link is providing any kind of measurable value is if it has got some sort of relevance match, either topical or geographic or a combination of both. Um, it has to have some level of, of sort of topical of, of relevance match in order for it to be providing any value. So that's what I do is we just go through and start checking, looking at every single one of the different links and determine. Um, at, and again, we start at the URL level, Robert, to get back to your question, but we if if you have very few backlinks because it's an inner page for the competitors that are ranking it's likely ranking because of internal links so zoom out and do the exact same process at the root domain level right so now you're looking at all the backlinks but you can whittle again you can eliminate the vast majority of them very quickly by applying the filters i just described and then looking at trust flow 1 to 20 only 21 to 40 41 to 60 etc and just going through and analyzing those backlinks to determine is there topical relevance you can, you can usually tell that very quickly because it tells you which the uh, topical trust flow is of each one of those links. And if there's no topical relevance, then the next thing I look for is, do they have um, geographic relevance, location relevance? And if I can't determine it has either one of them, then I just ignore that link. And I only start to collect a list of links that I need to meet and exceed of links that I can find uh, that have a parent relevance match. That makes sense. Anyway. That was another good question, uh, Robert. But yeah, some of these questions, man, just keep in mind, this is a public forum that you're asking questions on when you're talking about Hump Day Hangout. So we have the private forum, which might be more appropriate for some of those. Okay, Gordon's up. Gordon says, hey, guys, just need your help to clarify the current ranking boost GMB GBP gets from the related website. The website's organic ranking used to impact GMB ranking significantly, but I think that changed some time ago. So what is the current status of that? Websites organic used to impact GMB ranking significantly. Um, that's a good question. I don't know how I've not met, tried to measure that um, in isolation. So I really have no idea. I focus on both organic and Google business rankings now, like simultaneously. I try to balance both uh, of what I prioritize. I really do. Um, so I, I don't have any specific, I mean, for years, all I did was care about map stuff. So I, I don't know. I, I, I can't answer that, Gordon. I don't have an answer for you as to how much uh, organic traffic influences Google business ranking. Um, because I always try to manipulate organic traffic anyway, right? At, with a combination of CTR as well as um, Google ads, which I, I teach about in the mastermind, right? Google ads traffic is great for both organic traffic manipulation, right? You're buying real Google user traffic and you can set 
audience segments, guys, like interest segments and things, um, or uh, in market segments or uh, uh, life event segments that create a custom segment. And it's those are all real clicks that you're buying from Google for dirt cheap. I'm not talking about search ads, display ads. You can you can do, buy CTR signals directly from Google with display ads from real Google users and set your audience targeting to where you can get clicks that are weighted much heavier than some bot click from a CTR app. Do you understand? So um, anyway, so I always run Google ads traffic to my clients locations. Anyways, I do it both to their organic site and to their Google assets. So um, I don't have, I've not tested that in isolation. I just do it anyway, if that makes sense. So I don't, I don't have any way to kind of um, delineate between those that have organic traffic and those that don't. So anyway, hopefully that makes sense. Does the location and niche optimization of the related website still have a significant impact on the Google business ranking? Yes, it does. Um, the optimization does for sure. For a long time, I was doing only, I preferred to use just the Google business website for, for tree service stuff. And for a long time, man, it, it worked like crazy. Even if they had a self-hosted site, I would make the Google business website the primary website and then use the make appointment URL field to the money site. And I, I taught about this in the mastermind, um, but I, I clarified like most people probably aren't going to want to do this because most companies are going to want their primary website as the primary website of their Google business profile, especially if they spend a lot of money on their website. But tree guys, most of the time, they don't give a shit. All they care about are getting phone calls. That's it. They don't care. I mean, the vast majority of very rarely have I ever dealt with a tree service guy that really cared what his website looked like or anything. It was just a necessary thing that he had to have in order to generate leads online. So I, I, for a while, for a couple of years, I was actually purposefully using the Google business website as the primary website. And then I would link to with the make appointment button to the main website, the money site. Um, um, but what I found, and, and the reason I did that was because I was also manipulating CTR, right? Both with bots, as well as with Google ads, as I just mentioned, and sending CTR traffic to the Google map profile or Google business profile, and then clicking the website URL, which happened to be the Google business website was an additional map click, an additional gate engagement signal. And I saw a boost from that for, for about a year and a half, close to two years. I saw that every time I took a underperforming Google business asset, and by the way, guys, I'm telling you a story here. I'm not telling you to do this. I'm telling you it's not working anymore. <laughs> the, 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 the short of the story is that it doesn't work anymore. I found that it does, doesn't work anymore. I think Google caught on that that was a loophole of some sort and um, kind of closed that loophole, which happens. But for about a year and a half, I benefited a lot from that. Because like I said, I would buy traffic or send CTR manipulation traffic, bot, see, spam traffic um, to the Google business profile and then click the website URL, which would be a click to the Google business website and then it, it, I was using uh, Viper tools for quite some time, and there was a way that you could daisy chain a couple of clicks together. And um, now you can with the Kraken, but before that, I was using uh, Viper tools, and there was kind of a way that I did it. It was a kind of a hack to, to make it work. And so if you could get two clicks out of it, you get one from the Google business profile to the Google business website, and then another click through the make appointment button on the website, which would go to the money site. And that would work really well. <laughs> so um, anyway, the reason I brought all that up was because what I found was about, I don't know, sometime last year, I don't even remember when it was, I started noticing that um, some of the tree service contractors that I took on, when I switched away from their website to the Google business website, they actually dropped. And it, all the stuff that I had been doing was was hadn't changed. It, I, I kept doing what I always had been doing, but it dropped. And then I would optimize their website, even if there was a couple of instances that I didn't even own the site, but I sent you know, instructions to their, whoever was managing their site and they would optimize the site and I'd switch it back to the money site and the rankings would come back and actually improve because we did some on-page optimization. And that's when I started to notice a significant connection or correlation between uh, the primary website, the self-hosted site. That's the, so whatever the main website URL is of the Google, Google business profile. Also, if you guys have done this before, you'll know that like if you if you've ever had a Google business profile that you had like the Google business site as the main website, and then you switch it to a self-hosted site, Google pulls all of the keywords or scans all the keywords on the site, and it will start to uh, make suggestions or recommendations of products or services, 
right? And you know how you get the, you go to log into the Google business profile and it says like there's all these change or suggestions that were made by Google and you have the option to edit them or approve them or whatever. Um, if you've ever, you guys probably seen this because one of our, one of our mastermind members had posted a question last week about this. And he was like, Google keeps adding all these services to my Google business profile. Is it causing cannibalization? No, that won't cause cannibalization. But um, I eventually just stopped trying to go through and edit those because Google will constantly, even if you go through and edit like non-relevant uh, services, suggested services out, Google will suggest them again at a later time. So I just quit bothering with it and just leave whatever Google suggests. And I only go through and optimize the service descriptions, which is only 300 characters uh, of the services that are actually relevant. If that makes sense. So, um, so that's why I'm saying again, more proof that Google is using it's reading the main website and then pulling in and, and kind of auto optimizing, right? The Google business profile from data that it pulls from your website. So again, that's more proof that the Google business or the, excuse me, the main website is a, is an important part of um, the Google business profile. Okay. Hopefully that makes sense. If a client's website is not a location and is not location and niche optimized, and you set up a free Google business profile um, that is optimized in that manner, will it take the place of the original organic search website to provide and provide a ranking boost? Or No, no. Um, we do rank the Google business sites all the time for brand searches, sometimes for keyword searches, but that's, that's not usually, it can happen if we really hammer it with links, we can we can get the Google business website to rank for keyword searches. And in lower competition areas, they absolutely rank. But in high competition areas, it takes a bit of work. Um, but for brand searches, they rank for sure. So it won't hurt hurt, hurt anything. Uh, guys, it's a, it's, a, it's a validator. Even for national businesses or global businesses, for that matter, if you have a physical location, you can get you you can get, well, I don't know whether Google would approve it, like whether it's acceptable or not, but you can get a Google business profile if you have a real valid business location, even if it's not a local business. I know, but according to Google's acceptable use policy, you're not supposed to have a Google business profile if you don't serve local customers, but you can still get one if you have a real valid business location um, and it's an entity validator. So why not? You know what I mean? I did it for my directory, Tree Care HQ. I got a Google business profile for that. And not specifically because it's an entity validator. So anyway, Anthony says, regarding your use of Michael Bowe's Kraken CTR tool, can you go over some specific recipes? You spe no, not here, guys. That's Michael's got a group for that. Um, I appreciate you asking the question, Anthony, but no, I can't do that here. This is Humpty Hangouts and uh, Michael has his own group. So that's a question for Michael's group. And uh, and I'm not a power user of it, guys. I'm really not. I, I I was using uh, Kraken, or excuse me, yeah, the Kraken for referral traffic only, and um, that's it. That's I've, I've been using it for referral traffic, and that, that's it. So, and again, I'm not trying to be a dick, Anthony. It's just this isn't the appropriate place for that. So, all right, guys, we got about 18 more minutes, and we got some questions in the comment box, I think, and then we're going to wrap it up. So, well, let's check these out. Where should I start? And what's up, Alfredo? Hey, man. Yeah, let's see. I, I always get, I apologize, guys. I get everyone's uh, names mixed up on YouTube because it's not your real names, but uh, got someone saying, love the new platform over Facebook. That's for the mastermind. That's awesome. Uh, let's see. We talked about, oh, uh, same person. It would be helpful to have a checklist to keep things organized when launching a new site. Do we have a checklist or use I do. One? I do. I, I'll, um, I have to, I mean, I'll have to make a pub, make it public because I, I have one internally. Um, so give me a couple of days. And I think you're, uh, been attending. That's the word I was looking for. I think you've been attending my live streaming uh, in the morning. So you, that'll be a good place for me to share it maybe next week too. If you remind me, um, perhaps I can share that guys with, with our audience members next week. It'll give me some time to um, clean it up a bit. Right. Make yeah. I wanted to add on to one of the, uh, the questions and I posted the link in here, but for anyone else who's watching, um, if you're not familiar too with YouTube and, and search, you can go to the channel homepage and do a search. There's a little search icon on the page. Um, and then that will limit it to just that channel. So like for Weebly, you can go to our homepage on YouTube and put in Weebly and I'll show you a bunch of related stuff, uh, which I think it would be helpful. So anyways, just wanted to mention that. Yeah, for sure. Um, okay. So 
Pierre, Paul Driving School, if you have a real brick and mortar, can you build Web 2.0 and point them to the money site with no issues? Yes. Yeah. And guys, Web 2 is like, again, branded Web 2 is especially like there's no issues with that at all. Like that's normal. It's natural. And in fact, you should be doing that. And Pierre, we are our, our, what's called Syndication Academy is, is an entire training course and program specifically about building branded Web 2.0s and interlinking them so that you're constantly expanding your entity footprint. Like, and that's essentially what you're doing. You're helping to inform the knowledge graph for the local entity by expanding, uh, adding nodes to the knowledge graph, which is essentially adding a presence or establishing a presence on different web assets on the web, web 2.0s, assets, social media, like all different kinds of sites out there. And so that's what Syndication Academy is really all about. Originally, it was about syndication syndicating content to these branded profiles we've moved away from being syndication being the kind of primary uh mechanism for results to now establishing a present on as many kind of high authority properties out there as possible optimizing that profile and interlinking with as many other profiles as possible if that makes sense because it, again it's about creating an association between properties for one specific brand or entity local entity if that makes sense so you're informing the knowledge gra graph, you're expanding that knowledge graph and helping establish or strengthen the entity. And that's what I've said what, for tree service contractors. When we apply this consistently in about over about five months, um, it just kind of reaches like a critical mass or a tipping point where everything kind of just blossoms and it's just, it becomes damn near unmovable. <laughs> and I kick myself for it all the time because I'm in a, the industry, the tree service industry is for my, for my agency. Um, and those it's a seasonal business. And so every year in November, I get a lot of my tree service contractors that I've optimized for the year that want to can't pause their subscriptions or pause their services until spring. And that's, I hear that shit every single winter. Like, hey man, we just, cause it's slow. We just want to pause our services until spring and then we'll restart in the spring. Well, the problem is spring comes and they're still ranking. <laughs> and it's like, a the vast majority of them do not resubscribe until they start to slip in rankings. And sometimes that's two years later, you know? So that's why I said it's an effective strategy. It works. It works well. Um, so it looks like uh, Dan is talking here about uh, producing some content, creating YouTube short vids and syndicate. At the end, we have 20 links. What's the best way to push link juice to these links? Um, I'm not sure what, maybe he meant we index with Omega. Any other suggestions for link building? Yeah, those, in, I mean, index is one thing, but pushing power. Um, yeah, Dan, that's a good question. I mean, you I, potentially, I guess you could still use kind of bulk spam links for stuff like that because you're talking about um, syndicating across like those web 2.0. I don't like to use bulk spam for anything anymore, but when you're talking about trying to power up a large batch of URLs, and in your case, 20, obviously it can get expensive buying like, you know, good links. Uh, P PBN post links or, you know, whatever that can be expensive. Um, so something like that, what I would do is probably put, put them into a, a sheet, like a Google sheet, uh, and then build links to that. Right. Um, or better yet, like put them into a Google sheet. And so here, here's what, what I teach in the mastermind. So I got to be careful about how much I give away here, but what I teach, and that's also, I've taught this in the syndication Academy as well. So, um, the ID page, if you, Take the G sheet from your drive stack, your Google stack, if you if you have a Google stack. And if not, you can just do this with just a sheet. You go in and you publish the sheet. It's got to be public. So you have to create the sheet in a public folder. You have some legacy accounts out there. You can probably do that. And there's some apps out there that you can find that will actually make folders public now. Um, so you can just hunt one down. Anyway, create the Google sheet in a public folder. If and if you already have a Google stack, a drive stack, then you're, you're fine because you have a G sheet as part of your stack, right? And then you take all of those URLs and you put them into that sheet. What I like to do is then, um, I can never say the word, it starts with a C, but you create, you you hyperlink all those URLs to keywords too. So you, you know, create a formula and then you just drag and drop that formula, the keywords in one column, URLs in the other, and it creates anchor text links in that third column. And I do that, I teach that, I got an SOP for it in the mastermind, but I teach how to do that. And then you put all those links in the ID, uh, excuse me, the G sheet, which is embedded it's an embedded sheet into the ID page. And then you pow you build, build powerful links, high quality, topically relevant links to the ID page, which is a significant component of your brand anyways, or it should be, if that makes sense. So there, therefore, you don't need to use bulk spam because you're trying to power up 20 links all at once. 
you are powering up all kinds of links, but they're in the G sheet, which is embedded in the ID page, which is the unique resource identifier that um, validates the local entity. That's what the ID page is for. <laughs> you know what I mean? So you could push a lot of power to the ID page. And because of the embedded G sheet and the other, I, we use it as an iframe stack, we're actually pushing a lot of relevance through all of those iframes and the G sheet and the, all those links out to all those branded assets. Again, going back to like, we're using one kind of singular point uh, to push a lot of power that then distributes out across all the iframes and all the links and everything else that are in the ID page, which is only going out to branded assets. If you understand that, then you can use high quality links and power up all of those assets, Dan. Hopefully that makes sense. So it looks like Dan had a follow-up about how to build an ID page. Uh, come join the mastermind, man. Yeah. Um, or actually, or join the, I think I, I'm pretty sure I gave training away last uh, with Essie when I did an update webinar with her. I think it was in October for Syndication Academy. Um, but also, so this, yeah, for anyone who joins the mastermind, you get access to the Syndication yeah, Academy. That's too. True. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah. But I just want to let some of you guys know that I think it was in October. I did a guest host, um, the update webinar with Essie. And um, I, I gave that part away, which was how to build an ID page and how to do what I just described at the G sheet. Okay. Uh, let's see. So, so keyword, man, he says, same thing for plumbing and other service leads. They just want the phone to ring. Yeah, that's, like, that's what I was saying about tree guys. They don't give a shit about their sites. They really don't. I mean, a couple of, over like 10 years now, I've been working with tree guys. A couple of times I've had people that were really concerned about their site, but very rare. They don't really care for the most part. Are you still using Viper tools? No, just cracking, just for referral traffic. School me. How do I get info on your mastermind? Uh, there you go, Adam. Covered that. Oh, Mastermind.semanticmastery.com. Right. Beautiful. I think we're done. Cool. So, right, guys, <laughs> some of you tomorrow, we have a Build with Bradley group tomorrow. Oh, yeah. Twitch, Twitch, Twitch TV, twitch.tv slash Bradley Benner. I'll be live again tomorrow morning at 6.30 a.m. So, see you guys awesome. there. Bye, everyone.